So let's move straight over to Alessandro. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, I I've, uh, understand you've had a, a very busy start to the week. Now, the Uno is probably the best known Arduino board in the family. Why is it that you've decided to update it now? Yeah, as you mentioned, it's been on the market for more than a decade. It was launched in 2010, and uh, a couple of years ago, we celebrated uh, 10 million of units sold. Uh, we released uh, a, a limited edition, uh, miniaturized version of the, of the Uno. So over the years, we have been collecting a number of feature requests from, from, from makers, basically analyzing how... Uh, how makers start their journey in electronics. So what kind of uh, tasks are uh, more commonly done? What are the um, more, more complex tasks for, for beginners? And what are the limitations of the uh, of, uh, of a glorious microcontroller like the DVR that the UNR3 uh, has? So after researching for a while, because we have had this project uh, actually on our table for, for quite a while, we, we, we finalized a design by, by creating this UNO R4 um, pair of boards, uh, which includes uh, so many things that uh, we, we believe all makers were expecting. Now, the UNO R4 is available in two variants. There's the Minima and the Wi-Fi. Can you just take us quickly through some of the key new features for each of those boards? Sure. So the Uno R4 Minima is this one. It contains uh, the RA4 M1 microcontroller from Renesas. And basically, that's it. So it's a very powerful, very affordable uh, board to use all the features that are built in in the microcontroller. Uh, it basically can do everything that the Uno R3 can do, but it is faster thanks to the new microcontroller. And it has even new features built in, like the DAC. Uh, which is able to provide uh, analog functionality directly on the pins of the Arduino. Uh, it has an, a, a larger input voltage range because it supports up to 24 volts as an input voltage. It can work uh, in HID device mode, so it can simulate a mouse or a keyboard. Oh, uh, it, it, it has an op amp and a comparator, so a very powerful analog section. So all these things uh, are available in, uh, in, in this board. The Uno R4 Wi-Fi, um, it has all the things that I just mentioned for the Uno R4 Minima. And in addition, it has uh, a long series of, of features, uh, starting from Wi-Fi, of course, as the name says, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, uh, thanks to a coprocessor. There is an ESP32S3 coprocessor on the board, uh, which basically adds more computing power, which is available to more advanced users. As as you can see on the board, there is this matrix. It's a matrix of LEDs, 96 red dots, which are fully addressable and can be driven directly using a library and using a, a gallery of icons and animations that we are making available. Um, we are also providing a tool to create custom animations. So basically, it's a built-in, uh, very simple, very, very straightforward display to provide feedback to users. In addition, there is a quick connector on the side to connect the I2C devices and, and much more. I'll stop here, but these are the main features of the two boards. Of course, one of the, the key things people will be asking then is uh, what's the support look like in the Ardu um, Arduino IDE? Are, are these boards supported in there? And also, is that, that huge host of existing libraries compatible with this board? Sure. They are they are supported uh, on the Arduino IDE out of the box. So makers don't need to install any additional driver to use this board with the Arduino IDE. Just plug the USB cable. By the way, the USB is now a USB-C uh, connector, and it will really be recognized. We have working uh, a lot on ensuring that uh, libraries are uh, compatible also with the Uno R4, uh, the official libraries that we maintain, and the third-party libraries uh, of the entire Arduino ecosystem. So thanks to the collaboration of the library developers, uh, we, we have been running this early access program uh, with, uh, with many of them uh, to ensure that libraries are available. We are maintaining a web page which lists libraries that are still not fully compatible and need to be ported uh, with a list of alternatives and, and information about when they are going to be available. But most of them are working out of the box. Now, 32-bit microcontrollers on new for Arduino products, and that's uh, one of the sort of big changes here with the Uno R4. What was the appeal of the Renesas family of microcontrollers as the basis for this product? Yeah, there, there are several values of the of the Renesas family that, that uh, made it the, the 
the ideal choice for for this uh, for this product uh, because we know that uh, uh, the Renesas microcontrollers are, are not that um, common in the maker uh, market. So some people were were surprised uh, to to hear about a new microcontroller, which uh, in the end uh, is, is looking very interesting to, to most of them, according to the comments. Basically, it's a five volt microcontroller, so it allows us to preserve compatibility with the entire Arduino Uno ecosystem that exists and, and is based on five volts. In addition, it's a very, very robust microcontroller. For such a board, which is a, which is a Swiss army knife, basically, for, for all kinds of makers, and especially a very powerful learning tool for beginners and students, we need a robust microcontroller, which can tolerate uh, uh, stressful conditions, wiring mistakes, uh, uh, all the kind of... Uh, uh strange things that that a beginner might expect from a board without burning the board or creating other damages so in the end in addition to a long list of built-in uh features of the microcontroller because we are talking about a cortex m4 but in addition we have a built-in dac a built-in can bus the op amp um, we have many things so this made really it a good choice now, um, as you mentioned, um, it's great for beginners. I think um, people who've moved from the Uno to some of the other boards in the Arduino family, they'll have been sort of hit by the fact that only 3.3 um, volts can be applied to some of the GPIOs. Um, with this, you've retained the 5 volts, which is fantastic. Is there any sort of other overcurrent protection or anything like that in those IOs to make sure you know these are really robust for those makers taking their first steps with an Arduino? Yeah, in, in the design there are there is a lot of hidden value because we we put a lot of uh, extra attention in putting uh, diodes protections uh, everywhere to make sure that uh, even the worst mistake from a maker will not fry the board or will not fry the USB port of the PC of, of, of users. Uh, most uh, inexpensive prototyping boards on the market, of course, do not have this kind of circuitry because it's an extra cost which adds up to the cost of the board. But we for, for Arduino products, we believe these things are are fundamental to make the product a product that is uh, uh, lasting forever, basically. Now, when we're talking about uh, errors people can make, and even, even professionals make mistakes sometimes, one of them is obviously the supply voltage that's supported on the board. So I, I think that's been in increased. And also, my other question on that, uh, is the USB interface also just limited to 5 volts, or is there sort of like um, power delivery support so as you can use higher voltages on the USB interface? No, there is no power delivery on this board, unlike we have on our other high-end boards that we released recently, like the Giga R1. In this case, the USB interface is 5 volts, but the input voltage that can be supplied from the power jack, the traditional power jack of the, of the Uno, and also the V-in pin on the side of the board, uh, supports up to 24 volts. Uh, this was very requested from makers because the, now it's very convenient to use a single power supply for projects that, uh, in addition to the board, also need to power motors. So, so in, in this case, now it's possible to use a single power supply. Also, the thermal section of the of the board uh, was really improved. So even when running at these voltages, the board uh, keeps uh, a, a very low thermal behavior. One of the things you mentioned earlier in, in the in the new feature list that's on the board is the USB interface. We've got USB-C now, um, which means that um, that obviously opens up lots of new capabilities. And this particular board can also be used as a, a human interface device, a HID device. So, um, but one of the things that's nice about the Arduino and the thing that's um, amazed me right from the day one with it was the fact that the USB interface also allowed me to create sort of printf style um, text outputs to a, a terminal. So if I'm using that HID interface for my application, am I still able to output um, text messages to debug my code at the same time? Yeah, sure. Uh, because the, the USB is handled natively from the microcontroller. Uh, so both behaviors are supported. The more advanced users that can fully use the USB interface without the limitation of the of the serial to USB bridge that was uh, uh, in the in the Arduino R3 design. In this case, there is full control over the over the over the interface. So as you mentioned, there is HID device support. The board can simulate to be a mouse or to be a keyboard. Uh, uh, so it can uh, basically uh, be used to create uh, any kind of uh, gaming controllers or other kind of uh, human to machine controllers. In addition, we 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 even uh, uh, included uh, a 
Uh, another, since you mentioned debugging, I want to mention this thing. We, we added a feature that uh, uh, improves the way uh, makers can debug their, their, um, their code. Actually, two ways. One is a, is a built-in debug feature. So on the Uno R4 Minima, there is an SWD connector uh, here on the board. You see it here. So you can plug this to a hardware debugging device and connect that to the Arduino IDE, which now supports an interface for debugging. So you can stop the execution of a program running on the board. You can inspect the content of variables, and you can even change the content of variables while running. This is a very powerful to, way to debug without putting too many uh, print statements in your, in your terminal. On the UNR4 Wi-Fi, uh, this feature is integrated in the main USB port. So you don't need an extra uh, hardware debugger to, to do this. So um, that's an interesting um, cap capability. Are, are you also providing some some hardware debug uh, tools, or is that something that people would have to source separately to to do debugging on the minima? So no, the minima uh, the interface is compatible with all the the, the commercial third party uh, debuggers uh, on the market. Uh, so we we recommend to, to picking uh, one of them. Yeah. One interesting feature of the, the Wi-Fi version of the board is the LED matrix. That's obviously um, something that uh, makes it much e an another way of, sort of debugging code. You've got 96 LEDs there. Um, that's a dream come true in many cases. Uh, what drove you to put the LED matrix on the Wi-Fi version, but not on the minima? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I mean, uh, one day maybe we should uh, create so, sort, of a, sort of a movie with the backstage of all the design process uh, behind these boards because uh, we, we run through many, many ideas. Actually, we, we created so many designs, so many variants, prototypes that we could open a museum probably one day. Uh, <laughs> so in the end, we, you know, the temptation of saying, let's put also this feature on the minima, let's put, let's put also this one. In the end, we decided to go for a very minimalistic board the minima with uh, the minimal set of features like the name says with a microcontroller to have a very affordable product and then have a more capable version um, which is the wi-fi version which which also has the the, the led matrix now one of the challenges of of any type of display is obviously turning your ideas into an image that you can um, then put into your code somehow in order to drive drive the display. Have you um, got any support for people who want to easily turn their icons or symbols into images that can be placed on that LED matrix? Yeah, sure. The LED matrix is, is addressable in a very with a very abstract library. So there is an Arduino style library with very simple comments that allow you to to draw pictures, to change pictures, to refresh the, the LEDs. By the way, uh, for the more advanced users who are following us, the the, the technique, the design uh, technique behind this LED matrix is called Charlie Plexing. It's a it's a very nice way to to control a, a matrix uh, without using too many pins, basically, because they, the LEDs are refreshed. Uh, so fast that the human eye cannot see the, the refresh rate. Um, but at the same time, you can save pins. And we do not need any additional circuit or microcontroller on the board to drive the LEDs, which are driven directly from the microcontroller. This is a, this is a nice thing. We are providing a gallery of icons, a gallery of uh, pre-made uh, animations that users can, can call directly. And we are also providing an open source tool, a web-based tool uh, to visually create uh, icons by drawing on the dots, creating animations with the keyframes, and then exporting them as Arduino code with one click that can be brought into the, the Arduino sketch. Now, there's um, obviously a lot of discussion around security when it comes to developing IoT applications. And with the Wi-Fi module there, obviously, the, the, the Wi-Fi version of the board is, is going to be connected to the internet very quickly. Um, I guess some people would be concerned about having uh, whether SSID passwords, for example, and any other sort of security details for internet communication are stored in, in this system. Is there some sort of security aspect um, built in here as well? Yeah, sure. So the, 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 the UNOR 4 Wi-Fi um, delegates networking to the ESP32 coprocessor, um, uh, which has uh, uh, internal cryptographic uh, uh, features. So at the moment, at the time we're speaking, the, the Wi-Fi library will store the, 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 the Wi-Fi credentials in the main microcontroller as, 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 as usual. But in, we, we plan to release an update to this, which will seamlessly change the behavior to store everything in the SP32 uh, 
uh, secure memory. Now, um, obviously, with the, the Wi-Fi version, I think you've got you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth available on that Espressive module that's sold on there. And both of those are, are really complicated interfaces. Uh, there's a lot of software stacks that go with them. And then there's all the, the functionality that needs to be built on top. Um, what are you doing within the Arduino development environment in, in order to make them simpler to use? Yeah, sure. Um, for the Wi-Fi, we are uh, implementing the uh, interface of the Wi-Fi library, the, 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 the glorious Wi-Fi .h uh, library that is now popular in basically all the Arduino compatible platform platforms. So, so the same examples, the same method calls that are available in tutorials, uh, books, videos, uh, projects out there will be supported, are supported on the UNOR4 without the need to read a different documentation and set of comments. Uh, this is a very simple high level uh, API that basically allows to access all the Wi-Fi features and run a web server or a client or anything else. Uh, on Bluetooth, we provide the Arduino BLE um, library, which abstracts uh, the, the, the main features of BLE, because we are talking about Bluetooth low energy. We have a roadmap of uh, improvements in the future to also um, to expand the Arduino BLE library to the most uh, recent versions of the BLE standard uh, by adopting uh, some more advanced features that are currently requested by users, uh, but, but still very hard to use using the various uh, commercial BLE libraries that are available out there. We've uh, covered a lot of ground on the two new boards, and uh, unfortunately, we're uh, running out of time. So I'm just going to come in with uh, one last question to you, Alessandra, so as we can uh, also get a chance to talk to, to Robert and find out more about the Renesis microcontroller that drives all of this. Now, um, I think one of the frustrations for new developers who are starting to get into the Arduino environment is that C compiler. Um, the error messages are often very cryptic, and it's difficult to understand why um, the compiler won't um, convert my code uh, into something that the microcontroller understand. Have you made any progress there in, in helping uh, those who are new to programming? Yeah, sure. yeah, we, we introduced uh, on the UNOR 4 Wi-Fi a very new thing for Arduino, uh, which is basically an error catch catching mechanism uh, for fatal errors. So uh, if, in, as viewers or people who are following uh, this conversation know, when you make a, a some programming mistake that can result in the board crashing, for instance, uh, a division by zero or a wrong uh, memory access or something like that, uh, a board will just become silent. It will crash and, silent and suddenly stop responding until you reboot it. So there is no hint to understand what the, what the problem is and what kind of code is triggering the error. So we changed this behavior. Any fatal error now on the board will not make the board silent. The board will print a stack trace of the error in the serial monitor of the Arduino ID, always. So the board, before dying, will say, hey, I'm dying for this reason. Uh, and then there is a command that can be used to get even a more detailed explanation within the ID of the error to find the line which was triggering the, the crash. Super. That sounds like a, a major improvement. Uh, I remember learning C for the first time at university, and um, yeah, the, the, the error messages that came up were not helpful in any way whatsoever. And my, my experience has been it's not really improved much in the last 20 years. So I think that's a, a huge improvement for, especially for the new people entering uh, the makerspace. And uh, yeah, congratulations on getting that feature in there.